Welcome back, everyone, uh, to another one of our journey of conversations with entre entrepreneurs and innovators, thought leaders. Uh, uh, yeah, we've been on this run for like what two weeks, right? Ed? Yeah, I think we're at it at two weeks now. You yep. just, you know, dragging me down <laughs> the rabbit hole. <laughs> I, is, I feel like we're gonna run out of guests at this point because Rufaro was saying that Rufaro unfortunately can't be here today because uh, you know, man's is busy. But like, we're going to run out of guests at this rate because it's like almost three days a week, right? And this is like a slow week at three days a week, so <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, but the, the one thing we can we can bank on is that Zimbabwe won't run out of innovators. And speaking of innovators, we've got one here. Could I question Sasiwa? You know, you all know him. Um, fresh ideas, fresh in a box. Joey's Pizza. If Rufaro was here, I'm sure he'd be doing cartwheels because I think he's he's, he's Joey's Pizza's biggest fan and bottle store as well. Uh, could I welcome to what we call you know technically with uh, where we talk to the people that matter. Um, the people making things, making the moves out on the front lines. How's it going? I'm good. I'm humbled that I matter. But thank, thank you guys for having me. Uh, <laughs> Dude. I'm an avid listener to your podcast on my drive in from Glen Forest. Um, if the network is working, but you know, it's like, uh, I, I love how much content you guys are turning out. And I love that transformation, just not from the written blogs, but to the audio. I think it was necessary. And I think, uh, you guys will be the verge of Zim, you know, just keep pushing. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, Nate, like the thing is thanks, that you guys man. matter because you guys are the people actually doing stuff. So as much as we can write about stuff, we want you guys to then come and talk about the stuff because there's only so much context you can give someone with text. When you hear the actual person talking, it's a whole different ballgame. You know, I think uh, you're, you're right. Um, I, I, I was, yesterday, for example, I was on this Clubhouse, new app called Clubhouse. Hmm. And, it, uh, and, and it's cool to actually then, you know, some people have been following them on Twitter for ages and you've written, you've read their blogs and stuff, but actually hearing some of, some of the young smart Zimbos actually talking to us. And I think it was, it's, it's, it's a different experience. So I think it's, a, it's, 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 it's positive, the, the direction we're going. I think so. So I think we'll, we'll jump into it. So for those who don't know, and I don't know how you don't know, because I wrote about it and uh, could I put it up on his, on his Twitter? I actually wrote about it pretty late because I saw it like, way later um fresh ideas fresh in a box i'm guessing that's the best way people can then identify um basically is giving entrepreneurs um innovators and anyone who wants to come on the e-commerce scene the tools to do it so yeah edwin remember the flashback with taku about making a guest redundant <laughs> you know that's exactly what you just did <laughs> so I, i'm not going to describe it i'm going to let kuda jump in and just basically describe what that whole e-commerce platform is about all right, cool. So, so uh, what's happened in the last? Because um, we started fresh in a box October two thousand and um, shit. I think it's two thousand and eighteen. Is it two thousand eighteen? I think. Yeah. So, in that time, we had one developer, one of our directors, Dave Makani, was was developing the site, and we were basically solving iterations of problems every day as we were going. You know, um, exporting the CSV, linking up CSVs to Zoho books. How do we? accept international payments. There's all sorts of problems that every day we had to overcome as a startup in Zim. And, you know, eventually now the Fresh Ideas team is like eight strong of young developers. And we got to a stage sort of begin end of last year when we were done so much in-house development. And, you know, because of Bakani's, you know, very strict, everything is built for scale, right? We designed for scale. Um, we really loaded a bunch of redundancy and a bunch of capacity in the tech that we're building. And somewhere along the line last year, we started adding guys onto the platform to see how far we could push it. So, you know, we added surprise in a box, we added a bottle store, we added Joey's Pizza. And, you know, especially during December when surprise was really popping with the flowers and the gifts and stuff. And when Joey's was popping, I think we realized that there's a lot of, potential capacity within our tech um, that we obviously were not uh, fully utilizing, right? And how could we, how, how could we um, pass this on to other people so that our tech can become ubiquitous and so that people can get so used to using our way of doing things in a sense. And I think we kind of felt why not open it up to everybody, right? Like there's already a bunch of stuff like WooCommerce, uh, Shopify and so forth. And we tried all of those when we started. 
and none of them worked for what we needed, right? It wasn't easy to bake in eco cash. It wasn't easy to deal with zip it. You know, it, it wasn't, a lot of these things were not made for us, you know, just having a few written zip code or postcode fuck up a Zimbabwean experience because we don't have them here, right? So, you know, in, in our working in that space, we thought, why not try and give other people the platform and at the same time then share the cost of some of these things. So for example, you know, we're using three droplets from a digital ocean, for example, uh, which is huge capacity and huge amounts of calculations can be done on that. So we're using Agolia for search. We're using a cloud for a pro to protect our, you know, to protect our sites. We're using SendGrid for, for emails and, and auto automating our emails we're using, you know, MessageBird for our SMS services. And so we've got all this huge capacity and, you know, fresh in a box at the height of lockdown. I mean, we're not doing more than a thousand boxes a day anyway, right? So, uh, and Joey's is not doing more than, I don't know, a hundred covers a night on a really busy night. Because um, I think that's what we can physically manage, let's say, with the kind of drive, with the drivers and stuff we have. So why not let everybody, why not let the woman who sells baby clothes, uh, someone who does, you know, someone who does um, ballet shoes, you know, why not let everybody access what we have built, give them their own domains and let them sell. Uh, and at the same time, if they pay the 99 bucks per month, all it does is help us pay our huge tech bill at the end of each month. I think we're right now on about, if you take everything in consideration, we're about 2,000 bucks is going into uh, a really large tech bill for the for our backend stuff that keep our tech going. So we even threw in apps because what we're doing with our apps is they, they're slight hybrid. Uh, they're slight hybrid native, hybrid web wraps because we built our web apps, I believe really well. They work really well on mobile. It's a mobile first approach. Um, we can pretty much you know, get the access to accounts and everything on a native vibe, and but then log you into a, to a, to a web app, a web app. Um, and then you can, so, so people can immediately be on Android and on iOS without the really heavy development costs that we've paid over the years. Oh, cool. So that's, that's a lot of stuff you mentioned there, um, but I was also curious on what the target market is for the e-commerce poem. I mean, we know it as a business solution, but is there um, another market that you are targeting with it and can people that want to use it afford it? Well, the thing is, what we were looking at, for example, when we looked at some of our test examples, Joey's Bottle Store, Surprise in a Box, and we discovered that giving that $99 price point at Joey's, they don't have to sell many pizzas per day to cover that. I think if they sell one pizza a day, they cover that $99, you understand? Um, so we're hoping that we actually get people who are serious about selling online, people who are, who are trying to actually do, uh, to try and push the technology of home delivery and stuff forward. Um, the back end is robust. Uh, the system is real time. It's got a driver app. It's got a kitchen app. So what we're giving you is we're pretty much giving you everything that Fresh in a Box Joey's has. Like we're, not, we're not skimping on the tech. We're not holding back anything from, from our customers on the e-commerce platform. We want them to test it to the death because Fresh in a Box got so much better when we started Joey's because Joey's forced us to start thinking real time. Fresh in a Box was a 24-hour lag time delivery service. Joey's forced us to say, if someone orders now, we need a notification now so we can prepare it now and get it to their house within 30 minutes to an hour, right? So that's how Fresh in a Box then got the hour delivery service because we, um, because of Joey's. And, you know, now, now, I mean, some of our clients, Fuel App, Zimbabwe from Platinum Fuel, they're on there. We have customers in the UK, people like Plus Vans, who, and they forced us to now think about using multiple currencies like pounds and using different types of languaging like postcodes, et cetera. Um, we have some customers in Angola who forced us to add language packs. So now you can also get our sites in, in, in Portuguese, for example. 
So there's a lot of, the more people that use it, the better the platform gets even for us uh, as freshen about. 